Let me read you a sentence and, and, and just, just note how you respond to it. You may have heard it already today. The Australian capital Canberra is going into a snap one-week lockdown after recording its first case of COVID-19 in more than a year. I, 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 I mean, just like I say, note your response to that. It's almost so completely at odds with our shared experience now in the UK. It's, it's almost impossible to make sense of, I found, this morning. The Australian capital in Canberra is going into a snap one week lockdown after recording its first case of COVID-19 in more than a year. Sydney and Melbourne already in, in strict lockdowns because they're struggling with the infectious Delta strain. All sorts of issues relevant here, not least the sheer size of Australia and the distance between cities and towns and destinations. But that um, is going to affect around 400,000 people, so a fraction, for example, of the number of people that live in London. And the risk, the, the scale of the caution is explained by the fact that authorities do not know how the infected person caught the virus. Um, in New Zealand, as you have also probably heard, Jacinda Ardern has announced that they won't really be opening up their borders in anything like the normal way until next year. And in New Zealand, 26 people have died. I, 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 I as you know, I, I, I have been baffled pretty much from the beginning by the continuing support for Boris Johnson's handling of this crisis. Not, not just by the continuing support for Boris Johnson, but by the continuing support of his handling of the crisis, even while it was certainly, you know, arguably the worst in the world. And, and now, once again, it's been confirmed by Dominic Cummings that he was panicking about having the highest death toll and the worst economic impact. And we may yet end up close to that. Certainly, you know, I, I don't think we will now. I think we're about, so we're still top 20, but I think we're about 17th in terms of deaths per million of the population. I'll just check. That is, that is the figure in today's Times newspaper. We're seventh in the world for both total deaths and total new cases. It's not exactly world beating, is it? I don't know how many countries there are in the world, but we, we're currently recording the seventh highest number of new cases and the seventh highest uh, total of reported deaths. And New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has said the country's borders will remain closed until at least the end of the year. Uh, she continues to pursue a so-called elimination uh, strategy, although they are going to really ramp up their vaccination program. Um, uh, indeed, she aims to have vaccinated the entire population by the end of 2021. There is going to be an individual risk-based model for quarantine-free travel from the start of next year. So, uh, you know, the, the polar opposite, in other words, to what we've done here. All, all we really have in common with Australia and New Zealand, I'd argue, is, is a common language and being island nations. Now, the second bit is crucial, or, or I think the second bit is, is more interesting than perhaps many comparisons allow. The first bit, the fact that we have a common language, is why it lends itself so well to a radio phone-in show in London, isn't it? Because I don't know where you are listening or where you are from, but if you can speak at a lingo, you can contribute to this conversation. And if the conversation is about New Zealand, Australia and the UK, then the common lingo has got to be a great help to proceedings. And, and I mention that because I mentioned the, the bizarre... Do you remember when people were... I think we were... People were dying at a, a terrifying and heartbreaking rate and we were still taking calls from people saying he's doing his best why, why don't you give him a break he's doing his best I mean how bad would it have to have been for people to blame the bloke in charge for how bad it was answer if you convince yourself it's not bad or you've ended up in a weird place where you can never blame the bloke in charge for anything for whatever reason it's 1108 and we haven't mentioned the B word let's try and keep it that way for now but then maybe you never will we're back to the 5th Avenue message, aren't we, from Dirty Donald? The idea that you could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and not lose a single vote because people don't like you for normal, rational, nice reasons or even traditional political reasons. They like you because you're dirty, Donald. Um, I don't know if it's fair to apply that to, to UK voters, but it is quite bizarre that even when we were burying more people than per 
capita than pretty much any other country in the world and suffering more economic damage than any comparable economy, Johnson was still standing up in the House of Commons, even as we now know he was acknowledging the scale of the disaster privately, he was publicly doing a lap of honour, and 52% of the country was still cheering him and waving their little flags and doffing their little caps. It's quite, quite bizarre. And I think that because that has been the timbre of much news coverage, or certainly much commentary, that's why I reeled a bit today from that single sentence. The Australian capital Canberra is going into a snap one-week lockdown after recording its first case of COVID-19 in more than a year. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has said that the country's borders will remain closed until at least the end of the year. So, I don't really want to ask this question because I live here, not there. And also because I haven't lost anybody close to me through COVID-19 and therefore I'm conscious of perhaps sounding a little bit glib or irresponsible. But... Here are three political leaders. Scott Morrison's taken a right old kicking. That's one of the things my Australian callers can educate me about. Uh, uh, political leadership appears from here to have been much better in Australia, and yet I know that their Premier comes in for quite a lot of jib. I'm not quite sure why. I presume Jacinda Ardern is just being carried on the shoulders of the nation with some criticism and caveats about the extent of the lockdowns and the continuing closure, essentially, of the country. But... And, and I almost wish that I didn't have such a low opinion of the current incumbents because I, I worry that it colours my analysis of everything they do, you know. Even after the man that put Boris Johnson in Downing Street comes out and publicly endorses my view of Boris Johnson as being absolutely dis despicable and absolutely um, outrageous in his attitude to, to, to other human beings. Even after Dominic Cummings essentially echoes what I've been saying to you for years, I still worry that we assess this issue through the lens of that bias or that prejudice. I don't think we do for the record, but it's healthy to worry about it occasionally. Because here's the kicker, right? I don't know how you can read these three stories without thinking that the governments in Australia and New Zealand value the lives of their citizens more than the government in the United Kingdom values the lives of theirs. I just don't. I genuinely don't. I wish I could. And it's one of those thoughts that bubbles away in the background. It, it was, it bubbled to the surface a lot last year, beginning of this year, after his Christmas catastrophe saw us rocket back up, I think, to fourth in the world per capita deaths as a direct consequence of his dithering and despicable nonsense in the run up to Christmas. But that, that's the question. And I'd like you to come at it. In many ways, I'd quite like to take calls from Australia and New Zealand. Or, or people more familiar with the realities there that say, no, it's not that, James. I can see why it looks like that, but don't worry. That's not the conclusion that we've arrived at over on the other side of the world. But I don't know whether I'll get those calls. There's only one way to find out, of course. 0345 6060973. <laughs> and, of course, just to put the vaccine context in place, of course, the caution being displayed in Australia and New Zealand is, is in part due to the fact that they're not vaccinated on anything like the scale that we are. But just pick any month you want from the coronavirus saga pre-vaccine. So pick any month you want from 2020 and put that through the lens of this sentence. The Australian capital Canberra is going into a snap one week lockdown after recording its first case of COVID-19 in more than a year. So go back to pre-vaccination Britain and look at that sentence through the lens. Make that comparison. We don't need to make comparisons with post-vaccination Britain and pre-vaccination Australia because imagine if we'd put London into a snap lockdown after finding one case at any point in the last 18 months. It's mad, right? So I'm, I'm not in the mood for a scrap this hour. I'm off on my holidays tomorrow and I'd, I'd like to leave with a bit of a... But I, but I am prepared to have one if it's necessary. I, I, I want to believe that this doesn't prove that the British government just cares less about the lives of its citizens than the Australian and New Zealand governments do. Uh, but looking at the whole vista of the last 18 months, I don't know how you escape that conclusion. What is your top priority, Jacinda Ardern, keeping New Zealanders alive, James? 
What is your top priority, Boris Johnson? Well, uh, wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Go to school, don't go to school. Uh, vote me. It's kind of grim when you think of it like that. What is your top priority? What has been your top priority from the very beginning, Jacinda Ardern? Well, obviously, keeping New Zealanders alive, James. That's why only 26 have died. What has been your top priority from the very beginning, Boris Johnson? Carry, carry, where's the dog? I don't know if that's fair. What do you think his top priority has been since the very beginning? Because if it was keeping Brits alive, it should be in the Tower of London, right? There's 130,000 have died. What was your top priority from the very beginning of this crisis? And if you read Dominic Cummings, which I admit is a fairly uh, tiresome task, but if you do read his latest burblings, Boris Johnson didn't have any priorities at all from the very beginning. He was making it up as he goes, went along and veering from heads to tails to tails to heads and from heads to tails to back again from the very start. Which means that morally, you need to make a very strong case to me today for the idea that it doesn't prove on some level that Jacinda Ardern and Scott Morrison, um, or the New Zealand government and the Australian government, simply valued the lives of their citizens more than our government valued our lives and try and get the scarf off for this one because it's not left right labor tory remainer leave it's all of us it's all of our lives so jacinda ardern in, in new zealand didn't save the lives of people that voted for her before she saved the lives of people that didn't she didn't prioritize the people who support her over the people that didn't boris johnson didn't put people who don't like him to the front of the queue for the funeral parlours and people who do like him at the back. He cared equally about all of us, however we vote, however we feel, whatever we think. He cared equally about every single one of us. And the contention seems to be, particularly with this comparison, that he didn't care at all about you, about me, or about anyone. That's incredible, right? At least I think it is. Do feel free to, to punch as many holes as you want in this theory, because right now at 11.16, that's all it is. 0345 6060 973. Well, it's 52% it's theory, 48% question. I, I guess, you know, I've, I've laid my interpretation on pretty thick. So let's, let's, let's phrase the question quite objectively as well, although given that the phone lines are full, I, I guess the first few callers at least are going to be addressing the question I've already asked. Here are the numbers from Our World in Data as of August the 11th, 2021, all right? So confirmed cases per million, and I think the per million is crucial. The United Kingdom, 90,976 cases per million people in the population. Australia, 1,480. New Zealand, 604. Okay, I'll say that again. Confirmed cases per million. So the overall size of the population is irrelevant to these numbers. United Kingdom, 90,976. Australia, 1,480. A 90th. Of, of ours, give or take. And New Zealand, well, roughly half of that again, a total of 604 cases per million of the population. Then we come to the deaths. United Kingdom, 1,928 deaths per million. 1,928 deaths per million. Australia, 37. That's it, I finished. I, I'm not adding any hundreds or thousands to that. Australian, 37 deaths per million. And New Zealand, five. It, 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 I mean, I'm a journalist, yeah, allegedly. And I can't believe that I haven't been hit over the head with these statistics on a daily basis. I, only part of the explanation for that is going to be client journalism and, and, and people still having to cling to the carcass of Boris Johnson's uh, premiership because of what happened in 2016. That just blows my... absolutely blows my brains. 1,928 deaths per million in the UK, 37 in Australia and 5 in New Zealand. 90,976 confirmed cases per million in, in the UK, 1,480 in Australia and 604 in New Zealand. So okay, I, 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 the original question was, does that just prove that the governments in Australia and New Zealand prioritised the lives of their citizens and the government in the UK didn't? Um, that's a loaded question. 
So if you would prefer to come at it from the angle of just explain that to me in the context of political leadership, then feel free to do so. Noel is in Melbourne. So, Noel, what would you like to say? James, I think there's a bit more nuance to it than there the must way you be. explained. There uh, must be. There I, must I, be. I do agree. I do agree that uh, the Australian government seem to, certainly on the face of it, uh, care for their citizens more. And I don't think Boris does. From what I listen to you regularly, and I think it's a brilliant show, by the way. Thank you. But uh, I, I think that there's a bit more complication when it comes to Australia. I think they've handled it very well initially, but now they've made a bit of a, a mess of it when it comes to buying vaccines. So yes. uh, they apparently they haven't ordered the vaccine. So um, that's where they're letting this down right now. But uh, Yes, but Prior it's it's it, but it's a lockdown. Well. It's a lockdown after one case, which is why I'm at pains to compare that to what we were doing here before we were well vaccinated. Do you see what I mean? You're, I, I have made this point. I it's see, absolutely relevant, but it's not relevant to the I bigger see exactly picture. What you mean. Yeah, that's what no, I'm absolutely. struck today yeah, by Canberra point. being locked down for a week after the first case in over a year, and we're still cheering thirty thousand a day as a positive result. And I think the cases in Melbourne for a city of five million people are about a couple of hundred cases and we're locked down and we've been locked down for two weeks. So mm. I, I do think there's a different level of concern as far as uh, they don't want to see the, the bodies piling up here. No. Whereas that didn't seem to that didn't seem to be relevant in the UK and the United States. I didn't the, the leadership didn't seem to seem to accept that as a, as a um, almost collateral damage for the for the economy i I'm don't sure I, do you know much much as much as i can't abide the current administration i simply don't want that to be true i don't want that to be true out of some weird sense of patriotism or or or, 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 or like i don't mind i can slag off my family but other people can't do you know what i mean it just but the numbers are well, staggering well, I, hope you're right. I hope you're right oh, well i kind of hope i am as well but someone's going to have to make sense of these numbers in a way that doesn't paint it as fairly conclusive proof that that lot cared about the people that they govern and this lot here didn't Something that Dominic Cummings has kind of confirmed, which which adds fear to the to the to, to, to the thinking. No, thank you. Andrew's in Dartford. Andrew, what would you like to say? Uh, yes, uh, uh, hi, uh, I'm a first time caller as well. You're very well. Um, hi, uh, yeah, to sort of, uh, I completely agree with what you're saying. Really, um, my girlfriend's Australian. She's still in Sydney. Right. Um, I, w I was meant to have moved there last year. Um, but obviously, haven't been able to. Oh, you, you say obviously. Most people here probably aren't aware of just how. Um, violently, the drawbridge was pulled up in in Australia at the beginning of this process. Uh, well, even still now, they're being yeah. really ruthless about it. Um, uh -huh. There's a lot of people that are more so should be allowed to go back to Australia because they are Australian, more so than I want to go back. Um, but they're still not being allowed because they're being told that their reason for going aren't uh, good enough. Um, to travel. Yeah. Um, Whereas we mean, were letting in the world and his wife and uh, for, for, for the longest time and most recently even with the Delta variant on the march we decided to um, invite in 20,000 people from the country where it was running rampant. Well I mean even before all that straight from the beginning like my girlfriend was sort of saying to me I'm really worried I'm really scared for you and your family like really like they don't care yeah it's, it's like they don't care about you we've got so much less cases than you and we're sort of going into lockdown and they're just letting you go and do whatever they want. And she was really frightened to. Uh, and she's coming here now because I can't get there. Well, she's right. trying to come here. And she's, she's petrified. Really? Petrified. It, well, yeah. then, then we need to really drive home the vaccine point to her, don't we? Because we are... Well, that's the thing. I mean, obviously, they're really... We're, we're catching it, but we're not going to die from it. We're much less likely to die from it or, yes. or, or yes. be seriously ill because we're yeah. all... Increasing. Well, I mean, they're, they're only 20% fully vaccinated right. at the moment. Yeah. And the problem that they'd done at the beginning was that uh, Scott Morrison only well, put all his faith in AstraZeneca right. and one that was being produced in uh, um, Queensland, which okay. failed completely ah, right in the beginning yeah. Yeah. Um, and didn't sign up to anything else. And it was all so late. And then the whole time he was saying, well, Australia's not in a, in a rush. This is not a race. We don't need to rush this. Whereas, like all politicians, if he'd been in the lead, he would have been quite happy to, to see it as a race and to describe yeah, it as yeah. a competition, just like Boris yeah. Johnson did until we got overtaken by other European Union countries, which is a which well, is and, the, and the, qu the, the quick, sharp lockdowns for like one case, like you were talking about, yes. is it's become a very sort of political sort of thing at the moment. Yes. There's two premiers in Western Australia and Queensland that have both won their re-elections on the back of these um, lockdowns. Right.
Um, so it's becoming sort well, of a very it's down to media as well, because if you, I mean, if you're looking at the UK and Australia and New Zealand often have one eye on 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 the UK culturally and and politically. I, I know that because my wife still files sometimes for 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 Channel Seven or Nine. I forget which one. What? What? what oh, you're not there. It's your girlfriend that's there. Um, these numbers are. are I mean, they're, 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 I've, I've just gone back to triple check. They're 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 breathtaking, right? 1,928 yes, yeah. deaths per million in the UK, five in New Zealand. Yes, yeah. I mean, the, the majority of the deaths in Australia was in Melbourne. Right. Um, from their issue that they had, I think it was the, the second lockdown, because it was a quarantine leak that they, yeah, they had. Yeah, that's right, I remember. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's the way, I think it was 800 and something deaths, and it was because it all went into care homes. Yeah, they are. So, and and we were, you know, our care homes were, were described, of course, like like a, a a siege, like catapulting plague-ridden corpses into into uh, into a castle in the medieval period. One doctor told the Daily Telegraph, Andrew, I hope you get your re. I mean, when do you reckon? Do you reckon you'll see her before Christmas? Um, we're hoping to. I'm not holding that much hope at the oh, moment. Well, I, 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 last time I saw her was February last year. How are you going to recognise her? <laughs> just uh, thank God for technology. <laughs> thank God for Zoom. And, Imagine yeah. that. It makes you wonder how relationships survived these these distances in, in in previous eras, doesn't it? Thank you, mate. It's coming up to eleven twenty nine. Couple of phone lines free for this one. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three is the number you need. Simple question. Riddle me these numbers. Just just riddle them. Because that that headline was the one that threw me. The Australian capital Canberra. And I kind of you know when you have like a you're across it, but you're not across it. You're across it subconsciously. You know what's going on in other... Oh, Australia really pulled out the drawbridge. And New Zealand, they really... Oh, well, yeah. But you're too busy dealing with the dealing, dealing with the daily, getting on with getting on with it. And then something like that just comes along and smacks you right between the eyes. The Australian capital, Canberra, is going into a snap one-week lockdown after recording its first case of COVID-19 in more than a year. And um, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has said that the country's borders will remain closed until at the end of last year, until at least the end of the year. So you're thinking, God, that couldn't be more different from here. I wonder how the two or the three governments have performed in the context of keeping people alive. And you reach for these numbers and the bottom falls out of your world. What are we doing? Where the hell is Keir Starmer? Yeah, well, you've heard what I think, and you've heard my pontification, so I'll try and take as many calls as I can before Mystery Hour at 12, uh, many of which are coming in from Australia, and not so much New Zealand yet, but of course it's a three-way conversation. Looking at the figures, confirmed deaths and confirmed cases per million of the population, reeling from the gulf between the UK and the Antipodes. Um, how do you make sense of it without wondering whether it just means they cared more about human lives than the British government did, stroke, does. Adam's in Melbourne as well. Adam, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, long time, long time listener and uh, Thank thought you. finally this is my month to, to call in. Here we are. Um, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, it, it's just, I've uh, been living in Melbourne for 10 years. I'm uh, originally from, from London, grew up there. I uh, went, to, went to uni in the UK as well. Um, and I just sort of sit here, you know, and, and I've I, you know been listening to the show as a way of staying connected with what's sure. going on in the UK. Yeah. Um, and it's just been baffling um, seeing the, the difference between the, the policies adopted and things like that. I just, it's just, it's been hard to make sense of it. Have you managed um, to make any sense of it? Uh, I mean... Uh, your, your researcher was, was making a, a, like a point in terms of like so thinking about the like the I see lots of similarities between the UK and Australia. Yeah, um, for sure. Um, in terms of my my experience living in both countries, um, but I, I take the take the point in terms of location. Australia is a bit more geographically isolated than the UK, even though they are both both islands. And your yeah. re researcher was making the point that. The UK is like a, a global hub, and 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 so on, and and sure. Australia is a, a bit sort of separate from that. But and so you so, can, so easier yeah, to pull up the drawbridge when there's fewer people running over it. In, 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 yeah, yeah, well, sure. ab absolutely. Um, but then you can just look at sort of 
other policies which which are, are not to do with island status, if you like. But you can. So you were talking yesterday about um, whether masks should be mandatory on public transport. Yes. Um, and so you know we're we're in lockdown right now in Melbourne, and and you know masks are man. You know as you might expect, masks are mandatory whether you're indoors, whether you're outdoors. You say I might you expect. Go. I didn't know that. I I, I didn't know yeah. that. Um, but but then, like, even once we come out of lockdown, which we're hoping to maybe in a week, we'll sure. see, um, masks will remain mandatory indoors and outdoors. And they've remained mandatory public transport throughout the duration of the pandemic since the point where they were like, oh, masks are the right thing to be doing. Yeah. So we, we've kind it, of treated it, everything like a like a debate. We've treated everything mm. like, a, like an argument or, or, or like a sort of... You know, here's an expert and here's an idiot. Let's treat them both equally and, and, and let people decide which one they're going to side with. And that, that is probably the biggest yeah. difference. I don't know whether you picked up on this from listening oh. to British media. That's the biggest difference between here and there, yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I'm very aware of that from listening to your show. Mm. Um, so yeah, you've, you've, got, you know, you've, got, um, you've got Sky in Australia, haven't you? You've got the, the, the particularly well, pungent Murdoch media out there. So theoretically, mm. you should have been foxified or, or, or whatever. Yeah. The, it, it's interesting, though, like still one of your phrases, phrases in terms of clarity and leadership. Yeah. Um, what what we've had, so it, Australia is, is similar to America in the sense that you've got your state leaders that decide most of the policy, yeah. and then you've got your prime minister sort of operating at a federal level. Um, and in Victoria, yes, as one of your callers mentioned earlier, we had most of our deaths during uh, sort of an earlier phase of the pandemic through the care home. Um, but um, uh, since that time, the, the Premier in Victoria has been explicitly clear in terms of the messaging. I, like, you cannot fail to understand that, um, fail to understand the messages he's provided. Whereas at the federal level, it's not been quite as clear. Got you. Um, and, 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 but, but also, so this is where Scott Morrison maybe comes in for some criticism sure. and also the vaccine procurement, which is the real reason why we're going through these lockdowns now. Our vaccine levels are so low yes. uh, in terms of double, double vaccination. So it, that's been the responsibility of the federal government, ah, Scott okay. Morrison. And so, so he's dropped that ball. He's, yes. And then just, just to add, in terms of Sydney, New South Wales, where they're probably seeing some of the worst numbers and, and, and with the Delta variant proving um, really challenging in, uh, up in New South Wales, the, again, the Premier there, is, the reason why they seem to be struggling is the messaging in their daily press conferences, the listening to it, it is not clear. I see. And that, you know, it's that clarity. So, so and actually, well, in the way they're thing. talking about the, the the UK is unhelpful because, as as we really drove home yesterday, that, that Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland are, are very different places, recording very different results and, and pursuing increasingly different policies, particularly with relevance to, to to masks. It can be a little bit lazy to speak homogeneously of Australia as well. But but the but mm. the national comparison stand because you talk about New South Wales there in in mm. quite you know not hushed tones but they're having a, a tough time of it they had 345 new cases on thursday yep. which um was was really really bad news for them we, we've got yep. thirty thousand nationally and we're doing a lap of honor at the minute yeah it's it I is mean, just I, crazy right it's it, just crackers it, it, it is crazy i think though it, it, it I still think those numbers in the UK are, they're insane to, to my mind in terms of where I we are. I think we've stopped thinking about them. I, I think today, because mm. I have, if I have, and I, and I do this for a living, I think we've almost, mm. almost as a survival mechanism, Adam, a psychological yeah. survival mechanism, we've sort of yeah. thought, well, never mind that, we've just got to get on with it. And, and, and it's yeah. only when you get this unavoidable comparison, that line mm. about we've shut down the capital because there's been one case, that you mm. can't keep it in the cupboard anymore mm. you just have a you open the cupboard and we all have a little peek in together but i bet i mm. shut the door again at the end of this hour yeah <laughs> whereas yeah. you won't because you're, you're living on the good yeah. side of it I, I, i'm going to crack on because i want to squeeze in lots more calls people pointing out there's a two-hour time difference between australia and new zealand and it's later in new zealand which might explain why i'm getting more calls from australia but i want calls from the uk as well because it's our government that appears to have 
ridden pretty roughshod over the basic duty of care. And I stopped doing this every day last year. I was hitting this drum, wasn't I? Time and time and time again and, and hitting the numbers and pointing it out. But it, it became too much for me as well. It, was, it wasn't good for my mental health just to be standing in the crowd. Because you're not just pointing at a naked emperor, you're pointing at a naked emperor who appears to be presiding over avoidable, unnecessary and epic carnage. And eventually, being the little boy in the crowd, pointing at the emperor presiding over, pointing out his nudity, yes, but also his uh, almost unbelievable incompetence and, and lethal incompetence, becomes really, really hard for the messenger, never mind the people listening. 11.41 is the time. Ivor is in Crystal Palace. Ivor, what can you tell us? Hi, James. Well, Hi. I can help you sort of tick both a UK and a New Zealand box, um, because I'm a Kiwi living in South London. Excellent. Um, and my um, my darling mum has was actually in a she she lives back in New Zealand and she was actually in a car accident earlier this year so I've really and uh, she's okay but I've, in normal circumstances I would have probably jumped on a flight and yeah, spent, a, of course you would. spent a bit of time back you know back looking yeah. after her so it's been it's been really really tough I mean I haven't actually been back to New Zealand for about two and a half years now so okay. the lockdown really has sort of you know had a had a massive effect on me personally however you know I think. I think it's sometimes important for, for, for UK listeners to sort of reflect on the fact that New Zealand and Australia, and I actually grew up in both countries, but yeah. they're, they're very different countries. And Jacinda Ardern's government um, was actually elected on on a platform which sort of draws inspiration from a Maori word, which is manakitanga, which oh. basically means looking after each other. Really? And it's a core principle in in, I think, the New Zealand government's approach. I'm not saying it's a perfect government. I'm not saying sure. Jacinda's been a perfect prime minister, but it's very, very, <clears throat> it's very, very clear in the messaging, in the tone, in the language that's been used around COVID that looking after people, manaki tanga, as the sense that we are, you know, they, they use the phrase a team, of, a team of five million. We are part of something bigger than ourselves. We are part of a society. And we're in this, we're literally in this, we're properly in this together, you know. Mm. And when I speak to Kiwi friends, I mean, I'm finding it harder and harder to talk to Kiwi friends because it's just like, okay, thanks guys, hope you had a lovely time at the beach, good on you, we'll talk again in a couple of weeks and please don't rub it in, you know. Yeah. But it's been hard sort of seeing friends living very normal lives over the last 18 months, but... It, well, I, normal I in a been, sense, it, but, but oh, I see if you're there, it still feels normal, even though the ingress and egress, people coming in and out, is not happening. And masks and things are still commonplace, are they, or not? not no, but well, they don't not, need not, to be, because there there, there, there's none there. New Zealand had a pretty, a pretty strict first lockdown. Yeah. I mean, I had a, you know, a, a very dear friend of mine, you know, wasn't able to attend his dad's funeral. Um, you know, it's, it was really, really tough for New Zealanders as well in the first lockdown, but the... the, the the easing of restrictions has been has been considerable, and for most Kiwis, it's it, you know life is pretty normal. There will be some people that we, will, will be feeling doubly anxious, and I think the vaccine rollout has certainly sort of focused minds. But but this is actually where I'm starting to get a little bit anxious about New Zealand. Right. And, uh, you could say Australia, because in some ways they've kind of got themselves into a bit of a cul-de-sac in the sense that in in being so successful with a, a, a zero covid strategy they're now heavily reliant on a successful vaccin vaccination program before yes. they can open the borders and i was up late last night checking what jacinda was going to say about uh the re relaxation of the quarantine um, right. system in new zealand it's i think for all intents and purposes i'm probably going to have to wait till probably easter before yeah, i can get back next it's year not well, well, well into to get back year. to christmas especially i mean if you were because otherwise you'd be isolating and it's yeah. going to be a, a but i think in some ways, and I, I, was, I was just thinking as I was waiting, <laughs> waiting earlier. Yeah. I, I don't want to be sort of too glib with a, with a rugby analogy, but it's it's a little <laughs> You're bit. You're a like, Kiwi, mate. I couldn't get, expect to get to the end of this conversation. I had to squeeze it in, James. Come <laughs> it's, on, it's Come the on. law, isn't it? It's the law. You get to... <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, ki Kiwis and Aussies in different ways actually get a lot of pride out of being sort of world smashing and world beating. Yes. But in a very different way to the way Brits do, yes. usually because they often are, without <laughs> twisting the knife too much. But, you know, I mean, when it comes to the All Blacks, for example, we get a, a tremendous amount of pride out of, of really punching, it, punching above our weight on the global stage. Yes. And I think there's been a little bit of a strain of that in sort of COVID-free New Zealand yeah. pride, as, as it were. And the problem is, is I think Kiwis are going to have to accept that 
even with a fantastic vac- vaccination program, opening the borders up is going to be reintroducing risk, and that will inevitably involve cases, hospitalizations, and some deaths. Yes. And I think, the, I think Jacinda's got a real job on her hands now over the next six to nine months to sort of take New Zealanders on that journey to say, yeah, actually, guys, we've done as best we can now, but in opening up, even with a fantastic vaccination program, those That's numbers a, are going to go absolutely above fascinating. 26. Yeah, yeah, because it's, I'm, I'm thinking of, I, again, I mean, I'll, I'll use an ornithological analogy. It's, it's as if she's kept the nest really, really safe, but, but, but you can't stay in the nest forever. Yeah. She's kept you know, the nest incredibly safe compared to every other nest in the forest. But at some point, the, the, the chicks have to fledge. They have to fly. Yeah. And, and I, there will I, be risks. I, I, I say that reluctantly. Because no, I I'm get not it. A, you know, I'm, I'm not a sort of a, 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 a fist-shaking libertarian. No, I, quite I, the opposite. I, I, it's a communication problem she's got because they've ridden yeah. so high upon the, upon the success of, of the, you know, I will protect the lives of New Zealanders. I don't want a single New Zealander to die if it can be avoided. And the future will probably involve d- a deaths, a, a tiny number, but <clears throat> still deaths that can be filed under avoidable, technically yeah. filed under avoidable. Otherwise, you stay hermetically sealed forever. And that's right, the, the, the vaccines will be the point at which they take that risk. But she's almost created a, 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 a country in which all risks have been avoided. That is a brilliant contribution, actually. Really, really thought-provoking. Thank you, mate. No worries. Thanks, uh, and and best to your mum as well, yeah? I, I'm glad she's much. I appreciate it. All Keep right. up the good work. I'll do my best. Thank you. I can only do it with calls like yours. Much of this conversation looking in the rearview mirror and, frankly, reeling from comparisons of confirmed deaths per million and confirmed cases per million between the UK, Australia and New Zealand. Born of uh, just the response I had this morning, almost a sort of visceral response to that single sentence. Um, uh, about Canberra going into a a, a lockdown, a snap lockdown, because they found one case. Ivor, quite rightly, reminds us that the road ahead will look different. And Jason's been in touch. Jason Gardner, who you you will know from um, his his work on television on uh, things like Dancing on Ice and and Stepping Out and Born to Shine. Jason's been in touch with me on and off throughout the pandemic because he's one of the 30,000 Aussies unable to return home to see his family. And he's been in touch this morning... um, especially in this case because he says my mum has recently suffered a stroke and been diagnosed with stomach tumours and he still can't get home. The regulations imposed on Australia 16 months into the pandemic when the numbers are so low compared with European countries in the UK, the government, the Aussie government, is hell-bent on total eradication of COVID. At least the rest of the world has realised that we must learn to live with the virus like every other virus before it. Let's hypothesise and say they achieve eradication, then what? How can they ever allow the rest of the world to enter Australia? It's unrealistic and, dare I say, absurd. And I completely get your thinking as well. Although I I think where Ivor led us, and I I think this dropped just before Ivor finished speaking, the vaccines will create that need to live with the virus. To suggest that we should learn to live with the virus before vaccination is, as I know you know this, Jason, is patently absurd and and, and dangerous, although there's plenty of attention-seeking micro-celebrities in this country that have been saying that pretty much since the start. And that's when the messaging will have to change. The pursuit of eradication was the correct course to follow for much of the last 18 months, but when a population is vaccinated, they will have to take their foot off the eradication pedal, having used it to drive the success in terms of the death figures rather than the infection figures today to, to, to drive the success they've enjoyed they'll have to take the foot off that accelerator and that as i've ever explained the two brilliant contributions there one from a new zealander one from an aussie both currently unable to return home that suggests the road ahead is going to be very interesting and something we will no doubt return to uh alana is in uh, tooting alana what would you like to say oh hi um nice to speak to you Likewise. Is it, did I, say, I didn't time. pronounce your name correctly did i it's Alana. I knew it. I knew it. As soon as I read it out loud, it's entirely my fault. Alana, what would you like to say? Sorry for that. So I, that's all right. Uh, so I'm an Australian. I live in London. I've been here for 10 years. Um, you know, like that text message that you just read out, you know, yeah. I am unable to get back to Australia. I am a dual citizen and I live in Britain as a British person. So the Australian government thinks it has no responsibility to get me back to Australia, which fine, fair enough. Yeah. Probably it doesn't. Um, if 
I were to manage, you know, it would cost me £10,000 to get home two weeks in quarantine, even though I've had COVID and both of my vaccines. Yeah. Um, so that is beginning then, to feel excessive, right? They are beginning, it's beginning to feel very excessive, yeah. you know, and then once I got there, they've now um, changed the law. I would not be able to leave, even though I live here. Yeah. I would have to apply for an exemption. But wow. I think basically the problem is, so as, you know, one of your earlier callers said, Australia, you know, has a, a system where there's a federal government and a state government. I think Scott Morrison got very lucky in that there was quite a lot of comp competent premiers who run each of their states like it's, you know, their own country. Fair enough. Um, but every kind of federal responsibility, the vaccine rollout, hotel quarantine. I mean, if the so, hotel quarantine system worked, there wouldn't be COVID in Australia. It yeah. clearly does not. So the national um, level decision making has been poor and he's been rescued by the local level decision making. Yeah. And I leadership, so. clarity I mean, and leadership coming from the from the pre state premiers rather than perhaps from Canberra. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Australia uses like border closure as like a very simple response to sure. very complicated questions. And, you know, the messaging growing up is always things don't come here, we control what comes here and the method by which it comes is like, a, you know, something that John Howard said about people once, but, you know, you, c you can't even bring fruit into the country. I know, so I, I, watch, I watch Border Patrol or whatever it's called, yeah. duty free on the telly, I'm absolutely addicted yeah, to course. it, it's incredible the yeah. stuff you can't bring I, in. Let me steer I you, know. if I may, because I'm conscious of the time, yeah. to this comparison and, and for all the faults and failings and flaws, mm -hmm. 37 deaths per million of the population in Oz, 109 no, let's get 1,928 here. That's just, I can't begin to make sense of that in a, in a, in a, yeah. in a polite way. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm no fan of, you know, this government here either. I mean, I think, I think some of it is down to geography and some of it is due to, down to luck. And sure. then also like the sheer size of Australia. I mean, you know, I'm from the west coast of Australia. It's a five hour flight to get to Melbourne. You know, there's not, if, if there's an outbreak in Melbourne, life on the other side of the country can continue basically every city can con continue as normal because of whereas we, we're just massive. too interconnected and uh, I mean, you, yeah. you remember they tried to close down leicester i think it was and people were ringing in to of say I'm, I'm half a mile away from the from the club in australia that would actually work because yeah. the people you fit within exactly. the borders as in a way that they simply they simply don't hear but it's still a staggering disparity it, it is i mean absolutely, absolutely breathtaking is it unfair then for me to suggest it it speaks maybe more so with the new zealand model than the australian model and that that maori word that ivor introduced us to it just looks from the outside like these two governments cared more about their people than the than the government here in London? I would, I mean, I, I think Jacinda Ardern's a very competent mm. politician. Um, I don't think you can say the same about Scott Morrison. I don't think okay. you know, they're a very conservative, conservative government. Yeah. You know, more, um, it's good to hear. Good to know. Yeah, so I, 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 would, I would not say that about him. I think some of it was luck and some of it was, you know, reactionary keep the things out because of that, like a part of an Australian identity is to interesting. No, I get it. I get it. And and, and yeah. that that is the opposite of what um, Ivor described. I wish I'd had a crack at pronouncing that Maori word. But the idea that we will all look after each other is is not the same as we will pull up the drawbridges. Although they may have had similar similar results. Uh, Alana, I'm cracking on just because I'm, I'm conscious of the time. Thankfully, only one person has made the Keith Barron joke after I mentioned Duty Free, which is the name given to these sort of reality show about border controls in australia it's brilliant telly i think it is anyway um unfortunately the person who decided to make a joke is, is, is a good friend of mine it's scott balcony so well done scott uh 11 58 is the time russell's in lanarkshire with the last word on this what's it going to be hi james Hello, first mate. time caller welcome aboard. and uh, and a regular listener thank you um i had the um fortune to be in uh, new zealand at the time the pandemic hit and um, I'd like to echo the comments made by our Kiwi friend, Ivor. I'm also not going to try to pronounce the word, but that's exactly, um, <laughs> that's exactly how um, uh, we felt just in the um, approach the situation. And she didn't use three word slogans. Her words were be kind to each other. Yeah. And it was a completely different message she was giving out. And also right at the start you'll probably remember this yourself but she came out and said we're going to go fast and we're yeah. going to go hard got a small and window it. a small window to get ahead of this yeah. virus yes and those those were her words yeah. and um and there's one thing and it just showed she she displayed something this government i think is completely incapable of doing she showed empathy towards the population 
And there was one point she was being interviewed, and we were obviously watching that. And she was. They asked her about. Um, it was Easter time, of course, and asked her if the Easter Bunny would be still um, uh, visiting the children. And she turned around, and it just a smile lit up her face, and she just she said, "Yes, um, for all the, the the boys and girls out there, we've designated Easter Bunny as a key worker, and he will be getting out to visit this, uh, Easter." And Humanity, just, uh, warmth, clarity, leadership. Absolutely, uh, yes. mate. You've uh, taken us right up to the wire, and, and 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 rather beautifully, because you know it, it is about human beings. This conversation and about how much you value them, and I, I'm afraid that conclusion is is unavoidable.